Thanks everyone for joining today. <clears throat> so today's topic is you have droned your project, now what? So I come up with this idea for this this tech talk based on the the, the past year I've been traveling around to a lot of shows and I've and I've met and seen a lot of, of you out there. And a big topic in all these conferences and uh, meetings this year, a lot of it has been around droning. And how is that going to start advancing the engineering, architectural, landscape architectural space? And it will. There is no doubt about that. But one thing I constantly kept hearing was, all right, I've droned my site. What do I do? I have a model. What do I do with it? So we're going to look at how SiteOps, which is traditionally a, a site planning tool, uh, we're going to show you how you can do that and things that can be done with your model that you've created from your drone project. So the first thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the workflow. Now, the workflow, again, whether you drone or not, is the same. And again, this for this uh, webinar, we're going to look at using a site plan and components of a, a site. But you, by all means, this workflow works for a lot of different things. It could be manufacturing, mechanical, electrical, wastewater treatment. It doesn't matter. Everybody has a basic workflow of their project. First off, we've got to have one. Then we've got to get some information, some data. Then we want to create a design. We've got to come up with a budget. We've got to get stakeholder buy-in. And then we eventually may have to go through the revisions to get that approval. And we go to plan production. As we most all know, once we get into plan production, there's still a ton of work. But at that point, if we've chosen the right path to go down, it's merely just setting down and doing the work. There's not a lot of changes. There's not a lot of headaches, hopefully, again, unless something pops up. But that's uh, part of being an engineer and architect, right? We're always looking uh, for something that uh, is an issue. So we're going to start with this first section. There's going to be three main sections we look at on this workflow. The first one is context capture. Now, context capture is a software that Bentley has. This software works with drone data, it works with aerial photography, it works with um, cameras mounted on cars, it works with your cell phone, a camera. What this technology does is it takes, and again we're talking about droning, so we're going to focus around droning, it takes your drone data where you've taken imagery and you've had overlaps and things are set correctly, so all the, the different softwares, whether it's context capture or any of the others, they all have requirements, which is fine. We put that information in there, and we create a 3D model. Now, in some cases, some softwares create a 3D mesh. Some create a ton of points, and it's a point cloud. Uh, what we're going to look at today is a 3D mesh. And so if you can see on the screen in front of me, you can see, for example, where a, on the left-hand side where a flight was taken, images were taken, put together. And as we go toward the right, see more of a, it's a mine, it's a 3D model. Now, we're not going to work with the mine, but just to give you an idea that there's a lot of moving parts in this project that are constantly changing. So a great thing you can do with context capture is you can also sort of do construction management as a project go along. Or, as we're going to talk about today, is if all of a sudden something changes on your project, you can quickly get information and revise that model. So the first part of the workflow is context capture. And this is what do we do with the droning once we got it done. Again, I'm going to try just due to time. I'm not going to be able to get great depth into any of these one tools but again this is the pretty much the thing you're going to do from the droning data that you get now the big thing is what do we do with this data that context capture creates we got to put this into something in this case we're going to show it in site ops we got to clean up the model we got to come in and create plans and grading plans and stormwater and budgets and that's what site ops is this is uh, you're going to see three tools today this is the second of three whose whole focus is to take you from a reality 3D model of what's existing to a 3D model, reality model that shows your existing plus the improvements. So SiteOps is going to do everything from geolocate to, if you don't have context capture, drone data, you can import topo from a lot of different sources. We've got site layout, grading, stormwater, and of course out to 3D visualization. So we got the first two parts of the workflow taken care of. We now want to look at the third. Now this is Lumen RT. This is a, a newer product in the, the Bentley line of software, but everybody I've showed it to has fallen in love with it. Because the one thing we have a problem with in our industry a lot of times is getting buy-in from stakeholders. It could be the client, it could be the municipality. Imagine how many times a lot of y'all have been in front of governmental agencies where the people really don't know, planning board don't understand exactly what they're looking at. They're trying 
but they don't understand because they're looking at black and white line drawings or maybe a 2D flat color drawing. Because the idea of making 3D models that look something like this for a lot of our projects are just too costly and too time consuming. Well, we're going to show you where you can get to something like this within sometimes a matter of an hour, two hours, can depend on the complexity of the project, maybe a day or two. But getting models that look like this is a lot easier to get buy-in than going out with a flat sheet of paper. So that's again part of our ultimate workflow is how do we get all the way across this? How do we do all the different pieces? But there's one other important part that's really sets inside of this workflow that I love. I don't know about y'all. I had a company for years and have been an engineer for more than 20 years. I've never ever done a design where the first time I showed it to all the stakeholders in the project, everybody said, that's what we want. Everybody has to have their input in a project, and that's why it's a team. But somewhere along the way, somebody or multiple people need to change that model. They need to come in and move something, or maybe it's just something you didn't know the city was planning on doing, new zoning type or uh, new requirements. This whole process allows me to go back and do revisions. For example, in context capture, imagine uh, we're going to add more to the site. Just a simple couple 30 minutes or so of droning, add that to the model, we can do it. Or maybe there's some detail that the drone don't get that we need to go back with my with my cell phone. Or I go back with a camera, just a steel camera, and I want to do some supplemental shooting to get more, more clarity on something. But again, once I put that in the model, Site Ops can quickly help you make revisions, you can regrade it. And then Luminar T, because we're doing most of the creation of the 3D model inside Site Ops, pushing it out to Civil 3 or to Luminar T is pretty simple. And you'll see some of that today. So ultimately what we're doing is we're working in reality modeling. And this is, everybody probably knows this is Albert Einstein. Um, he is one of my favorite sayings. I use this a lot because I think it's absolutely true. And reality modeling has brought users of this type of technology who are already using this workflow, this kind of feeling. The, the quote is, people love chopping wood. And really the question is, why do people love chopping wood? It's an activity one immediately sees results. And this is what I love now. You're not going to see enter the, con enter the context capture data and instantly I see a site plan in, in Luminar T. But the idea that I could see it in 30 minutes or an hour, in our world when it normally takes days, weeks, or months to do plans, especially in that conceptual phase, that's an hour is almost immediate. And that's the beauty. But also in some parts of this design, you can not instantly see changes. And that's the, that's the beauty of what we're going to see today, is how do we go in and make these changes and these determinations. So I want to spend most of our time, again, actually showing this, getting into using some of this technology and showing, again, how we can clean it up, how we can design, how we can export, and some examples of this type of workflow. So I'm going to start up SiteOps. It's a web-based software. You just click on it. It actually, the little yellow or orange bar y'all saw, is really cool. That's when it download installs the latest version. That's really slick. You don't have, you know, gigs of information. It's a little over a meg, drops it in. I'm ready to work. So tomorrow, if we push new uh, tools into the software, which you'll actually see a few new ones today. If you're a user, there's one or two that I'm working in a test environment that won't be out for a couple weeks. Uh, in a couple weeks, you'll get a new version. Don't even do anything. Open it up, and you're already working. Makes it really simple and easy. So this is SiteOps. So I'm going to go into a working environment. And I'm just going to create a new drawing. Now, for the ones who, um, just let me type this in. Yeah, for the ones who are not working in Imperial, you're working in metric, I'm going to do everything Imperial today. But by all means, site off works Imperial metric, and you can switch back and forth at any time. So it doesn't matter. Um, if you start one way and need to change it over, uh, please do so. So we're going to start what we call base map property. And this is just a, a blank property. It gives the project the ability to start adding things to the model. So we're going to go under import, and this is typically in the past where a lot of you all see if you've seen site ops where I can bring in my own information, I can go out and geolocate it and use USGS, and again, a lot of different information. Now, we're going to go and start with a simple little site, and I'm going to show you the difference. I want to go out, and I want you to look at Cedarville, if I can spell correctly, there we go, Cedarville, PA. We're going to look at a little church site, say client is looking at the idea of potentially uh, knocking down a church and rebuilding a new one. So if we come in and we look at the project, we're going to zoom in. Right here is the church. Now I want you to look at this and keep keep a mental picture. We're going, we're going to keep a little picture right there. 
And see how nice and pretty that site looks. Look how nice the asphalt looks. See how nice the basketball court looks in the back. Don't really look like it needs a lot of work, right? All right, let's keep that mental picture. So now this site was droned. It went out and they, they droned over the site. Got a lot of information. So we want to use that instead because that droning information is only a couple weeks old. I don't know when the USGS data came from. So a lot of users may start with USGS. Then once a client likes it and wants to spend a little money, maybe we'll go back and do a quick droning. Now we do have some users that are doing feasibility. When they do the site visit, they drone it right then, go back and then start working. So there's a lot of different ways of how to fit droning into this workflow. So in this case, we're going to say, you know what, droning was already done. They knew they were going to do something, so they went ahead and paid for it. So I'm going to do what's called import 3MX layer. Now, Context Capture creates a 3MX file, and I'm going to paste this in. This was located on my computer itself. I'll show you in a minute how we can get ones that are web-based. And once I bring this in, I'm going to let this slow down just because we're in a, an Adobe meeting. But I'm going to zoom in real quick. And we're looking at that droned image. Now, one thing I want you to notice, that parking lot does not look that good. That basketball court, if we zoom in, is not pristine and black asphalt with a couple of lines. It's pretty much worn out. And this is why they really want to come in and start working on this project. Because there is something different. They need to come in and do it. Now, if I go to the, acute, uh, the viewer for the 3D model that was done in Context Capture, we can actually see this is what really come out of the drone. Now, a lot of times we're going to look at stuff in the top. And I'm going to show you what happens when we go to grab data from this. Because what's happening is we have a three-dimensional model that has holes underneath. I don't have surface data under the building. I don't have it under the tree, the treescapes. Not everywhere. I do have a few spots. You can see underneath the area here, we've got a nice little section. We can even see the power lines. So how do I use this data? Okay, once I brought it into site ops, I want to grab information from it. So what we did is we went in and we quickly created just a section here called Clip 3MX Topo. And it's going to take your boundary. In this case, let's just make the boundary a little bit different. Now, again, you could import that in. Uh, I could go out and bring it in from or type it in from meets and bounds. A lot of different ways. I'm just going to sort of eyeball this just for setting the project up. We'll just come across, set this boundary, and then I want to tell site ops to take that model. Say OK. And we are going to go back to import and we're going to clip it. Now what happens over the next minute or two, SiteOps is going to look at that model and it's going to take it and it's going to take the 3D mesh at its most highest level of resolution. So while that's doing it, we'll go back to the acute 3D model. If you notice when I roll out, and then this one's not a big one, so it, it doesn't get uh, resolution stays fairly high, but your resolution can, can change. So as you move in, it can add more data and make it a more robust look to the model. So SiteOps is going down to that ultimate lowest level, and it's going to create a surface. So I'm going to cancel this just to go back up here to the administrator. We're just going to try to save a few minutes time because we've got a lot to look at, very little time to, to do it. So let's come in and let's look at that same church area. Say, no, I don't want to save that. And I want to open it up, again, probably about three or four minutes down the road. And I want you to see what it looks like. So this model's coming in. Looks exactly the same, but here's my problem. Look at that existing topo that SiteOps created. Now we know it don't look like that, right? We know it don't come in and have this weird topography that looks like this. It's fairly flat with some movement on the exteriors. But the difference is SiteOps went and looked at it. So now how do I clean this up? How do I come in and take something that looks like this and make it different? So let's take a little simple section. Let's just say I have a stand of trees right there that I want to get rid of. So I'm going to come under Layers, and I'm going to turn off the 3MX file for now. And I want to go to this outer edge. Under Grading, there's a tool called Prune Existing. Now, this can work on anything. We're going to do this just on some context capture data. And I'm going to go in and tell it to prune. What's going to happen is it's going to take the outer extremities of that model area and it's going to revise it getting rid of the data that came in because of the canopy and if we look right there we can already see SiteOps has cut out some pieces let the topo open up and now it's graded that out so what we want to be able to do is not not use 
the data that we don't need. So what you would do is you would spend a few minutes and you would go through a model and you would cut out areas that don't need to be there. And the beauty is by cutting them out, SiteOps will go in and interpolate them and come up with a design. So here's that same one, but I have a bunch of areas on there. Once it loads up, it's going to go in and say, you know what? There's areas here that need to be revised and I'm going to revise them. And you can see it just downloaded the information along the bottom. Take just a second. But imagine I can go in and clean my data up. This takes, again, five or ten minutes. And that topo looks way better. A lot more realistic. And could probably spend more time making it look even better. But again, we're, we're talking about time and issue that we all have in our projects. Because in that conceptual phase, we've got to get it out quick. But we've got to get out a good model. So as you can see now, this looks a lot better. This is where the church was. This is where the little building, this is where those grove of trees were. Again, we can see all this kind of information has been modified. So at this point, this is when you come in and start for the ones who haven't seen site ops. I'll just give you a quick little glimpse of it. This is when we're going to come in, turn off some of this information, and we're going to build a church. We're going to do all kinds of different things that we would want to. I'm going to come in just, we can just, let's just go and do a layout. We'll do a quick little parking lot. So if I want to come in and do a parking lot, imagine a parking lot with a little church in the middle start the solver button there it is let's do a building i don't know maybe 120 by 200 uh, let's make that building bigger and we can make the parking lot stretch it out more or it could be two separate parking lots maybe i go i want one in the front i want one in the back we can do something that looks more like this let's just clean it up Bring in some roadways. Let's turn my image back on so I can see. I can either do the underlay image or I can turn back on the full 3MX model. Let's go up here and just do a quick little layout. I want a car drive. Now, again, in most times as we're doing a project, we're not going to do this in about 30 seconds or just a couple minutes. We're going to spend a few minutes working on a project. And you can see I can come in now and quickly design something, maybe and put some on street parking. Everything has the ability to have controls, have uh, things that can be worked on. So if I come in over here, the road has a green side. So on the green side, I want all, on street parking. So I can now see the parking. I can come in and do all kind of different things. So my goal is after a few moments, and maybe about 15, 20 minutes, I think it's what it took me to do, is I took that design and I turned it into this one. And again, it's just where I took a little more time, made things perpendicular and parallel with each other, made them look pretty. Uh, again, made something a little, a little more like what the project should look like. And those little white boxes, I'll explain what they are in just a second. It's a really neat thing that site ops can do. So we come in. We're going to let this model load up. Hey, and inside David, the model, we're... what the little white boxes are. Yes, go ahead. I was going to say, we had a question from one of our users here. Uh, is uh, 3MX the only file type 3D model that site ops can use? At the present moment, we are working on the ability to work with point clouds, which is what some of the other major players inside this industry work with. Uh, but at currently, uh, 3MX is our first uh, 3D model file like this that we are working with. All right, so this is the church itself. This is a real church. This is the, the actual model. Uh, I have an open area inside the church. We have parking lots to the east and west, and we have on-street parking. We had to move the the uh, soccer or soccer basketball court a little bit just to make it fit better in the new design. And here's where we come, the good part. I have a model. The reality is the client doesn't know, and I don't know what the cost is. I don't know what, how it's going to react. I want to see what it grades like. Do we have walls? Do we not? Of all these things, I can now start working through the site, processing from that existing drone data to this as to what's going to happen on the site. We'll let it pop up. It's just generating a surface underneath. And it will pop up a grading plan. Here we go. And let's just turn on some other colors real quick that a lot of us are used to seeing. And that's a grading analysis. Red is cut. Blue is fill. Yellow means little to no elevation change depending on the severity of the color change. The magenta that you see across the sort of northeast corner and there on the southwest. I'll roll it down and you can see a little bit more. Those are retaining walls. Lower right, we can actually see the budget. And you can see now I have 140000 dollars worth of retaining walls because I took a site that we were only using a small portion of and we're trying to use as much as possible to make a bigger church because it's growing so we need to push the extents of the project out. I then can even come in 
start seeing the parking lots, the sidewalks, the on-street parking, turn on the contours, and I can start seeing what's happening with this project. And that's the beauty of it. How do I come in from the drone within, I think it took me literally about 30 minutes, for maybe 40 to go from the drone data to this. Now, the, one part of it is I just so happened to know of a church that, they, that wanted to go on this site, so it wasn't that hard. If you don't know the building, sometimes you may have to do with different building configurations and sizes, but that is the beauty of this type of workflow because that's our experience, right? Our experience is telling clients how to build their site, how to move things around. The fellowship hall can only be so big. The Sunday school classroom section can only, you know, you can only fit but so much. The worship hall, you can only fit but so much. You can work with the client. A lot of our users, we even work with them one-on-one, -on -one, almost in like a little design charrette, right with each other so they can get an idea of what's going on and what's the, you know, if I, if I make something bigger, if I do something, what does that cost? You know, we can come in and say, wow, this is a great model, but if I don't want that on-street parking, will that change my price? Well, most likely it will just because we've come in. Let me go to my properties for that, and let's take off the on -site. We've come in and give it more room to grade. So we went in and made a fairly major change <clears throat> that would take, you know, erasing parking spaces in our normal CAD software would not take very long, right? But doing it, the grading plant over again is where this really comes and shines as a work workflow because now I've just taken that, I've got that model that we're still working on top of, and I've come in and I took a million plus dollar project and I've reduced it down into 800,000 and it's still going lower. We still need a little bit of wall just because of some of the stuff we're working in the back, but that wall drastically changed and even changed a little bit of the lower wall as well. So that's the beauty of this workflow. Now, another thing we can do inside this workflow is we can add what are called Luminar T models. So the, the Luminar T, that's a great little uh, tool that's out there. I absolutely love it. And anybody see me talk about it know that. We can come in and do things like add trees to parking islands. I can add trees to, or cars to the parking spaces. So if we start our layout solver, let's just come in and grab the edge of the parking and we're going to move it. You see the, the cars automatically adjust with it. So I'm making the 3D model that will be pushed out later on. I'm making it all at one time, which is that is the really important part. Because imagine if I have to go back and change that parking lot for real, and I was already doing it the traditional way, and I went out to my 3D tool, and all of a sudden I got a new layout. I got to go back and replace everything again. In this case, we don't do any of that. We're going to do it right here, right now, and make those revisions because that's also where we can add budget. Those trees, I can tell inside the budget, they're $350 everywhere we put one. I've got them alone. The outer edges. You can manually place them. I can array them. A lot of different ways to, to come in and create the model. So let's go out and look at a different workflow or a different uh, project. Let's go to a place called Coatsville. Now, there's different ways you can look at the information that comes from the context capture. We saw one that was done on a smaller site. There are times that people do things on a grander scale or they get a hold of a model that was done on a grander scale. This is an area called uh, Coatesville, Pennsylvania. This is a bigger model. They modeled the whole city. And let's just say we're looking for a community college area. We, we know we want to come in and revitalize some of the old factory district that's no longer needed. So we're going to take this section, but look at this. I can go in and start working in this smaller area which is really great. Now I'm going to come in and we're going to do just like we did before. I'm going to go and there we go. And I'm going to let SiteOps process the data and we're going to create a site. I've already done all that. Again, we don't need to rehash through that over the next couple of minutes. As we can see, we have a site plan. Everything is great. We can come in multiple buildings. Let's just go over the layers for just a second. I want to turn those off just so you see again. It doesn't have to be a simple project. It can be huge. It can be complex. It doesn't matter. But here's what we're going to do next. Remember, it's all about this workflow of taking the drone, creating the design, and going to Luminar T. Now, to go to Luminar T is actually pretty simple in SiteOps. Once I've got everything placed, like you saw a minute ago, the trees and the cars, I just simply tell it to go to, to uh, Luminar T, and I tell it OK. And when I pick 3MX, because I have data, I can actually tell it what quality. Now, we'll go ahead and tell you this is something, again, in our testing system. So um, you'll see this coming shortly. Don't go to, unless you have a good machine, unlike, like a lot of things, but has a good graphics card, don't go to the ultra-high one. 
uh, just because it takes a lot of memory. And I'm going to show you what it looks like at not the ultra high, just the high level, because you still get an absolutely fantastic model. So you'd push this out. It'll take about 10 minutes for it to create the surface, the models, the whole time. You can go get a cup of coffee, you know, go talk at the, at the water cooler, do whatever you want. Site Ops and Luminar T are doing all the work for you. And what happens is when you're done, you get something that looks like this. This is that model where the only thing I really went in and placed extra, because uh, I have another version just like we did with the church where I have everything placed already. I placed a couple of the people where you can see the gentleman walking in the, coming across the north side of this little common area. I added the walking people. Everything else was added inside of Site Ops. So if I change something, it moved. And the beauty of Luminar T, which I really love for the ones again, who haven't seen it, it has a thing called a live cube. I could actually package this up, send this out to a client, send it out to the stakeholders, and say, all right, roll this around, look at it. What do you like? Do we need to add more sidewalk? Do we need to change the building? What do we need to do to make this project go forward? And then you simply go back into Site Ops and you change it and you push it back out. So again, it's, and this is all with the drone data. So if I roll it around, they can now start looking at how does this fit into the community. You can see the old factories. We, again, we, we use the, the cropping tool to get rid of the existing factory. We're setting right, the smokestacks were setting right about where the, the actual greenhouse is. Now, the other neat thing you can do inside of Luminar T is you can quickly make videos just by going around to different views. And this is really neat because what's going to happen is once I do the view, it's going to go out and do all the work for me. I just tell it how I want the video produced. So I'm going to let this go. It's about two minutes long. I just want you to imagine trying to sell this project to this town, meeting with the people around it, meeting with the college staff, meeting with the town officials, meeting with everybody, and being able to sit back and just let this play. Now this is the kind of thing that makes your client happy. This gets them as return clients because the idea that I could do this in a, maybe a day or two, or normally they're used to just seeing napkin sketches, onion skin, maybe a little bit of a drawing that's half thrown together in a day or two. This will keep them coming back to you. This separates you from your competition, and this will also help this project sell. Well, there should be no reason that they shouldn't say yes to this project, right? But the hard part is if I was in front of this town council, who's probably made up of, of people that are not engineers and architects and landscape architects and probably not even construction, they're making decisions on what's going to happen, and they have no clue what they're looking at. But this one is pretty simple to see. we got a nice little school campus that goes in, and again, do we need to add more stuff? Do we need to make it smaller? Make you know, Maybe we can go and add more of the factory across the river and do a little bridge over it, make something really nice but a lot bigger. That's what we're going to be able to deliver to this whole group of stakeholders. And this is the workflow we're talking about. This is what makes life, again, for, uh, for our users that do this, a lot simpler because they can convey this type of workflow and scenarios across the board. So we're up on our time. It's been a little right at about 30 minutes. So I just want to sort of close this down. Let's get to some questions. Uh, so just a quick recap. You know, have you droned your project? Yet? Now what? It's really about using that acquired data because you're going to get that data a lot. Applying your experience. That is the biggest key in this whole workflow. That's why we created this workflow. A lot of times our experience is not being used to its fullest level. We know what we want and then we can go from there. We want to analyze the best scenario. A lot of the tools we have don't really allow us to analyze anything. We get one or two shots to the design. Hopefully it's the best and we go forward. And by delivering those options, we're going to exceed their expectations. We want to make clients happy. And believe me, if you walk in that first time and they see that 3D model, they're not even going to know what to say. They're going to look at it and think you are the greatest engineer, architect, professional that exists out there because they just got their answers solved in a way they can understand. And then and deliver that little side-offs budget with it, you're really going to make them happy.
All right, David, we got a question here from one of our participants. Um, this is in reference to the church project that you pulled in first. So how long did the, did the drone data take to process and create the 3MX for this size, a site this size? David, I think you're on mute. Sorry about that. <laughs> I did not actually do the actual droning of this process. Uh, but I did talk to the gentleman, and he did. He is a, a Bentley colleague. And he said it took a couple hours. It's like anything. The more data you have, the bigger the project. Um, the one for the the big city, uh, that took, uh, I think, about a day. Um, just let it set in process. So probably the longest part you're going to see in this is the droning. But again, it depends on how, level, how much detail you need in those beginning stages. It, for a lot of people, it may be, let's get some quick information, make a quick decision, then go back in with with digital cameras and phones and supplement that, put a lot more information into that model, let it churn for you know four or five or six hours and get a very detailed model. But again, if the client doesn't like our design or the property just doesn't work, we don't want to spend any more time and effort than we have to. We want to get a really quick answer, get, a, get on our way and, and go to the next project. Here's another question, Dave. I'm not really sure if you'll know the answer to this or not, but um, <clears throat> Have you thought about having an application to plan the drone flight, and can you go directly to uh, the process with context capture? Okay, the planning of the drones, uh, the softwares that are out there that will <clears throat> that will control the drones, they're already out there. They do that. They give you plans, and I, and I absolutely love some of the softwares and some of the applications that I've seen. For example, they can tell if the, there's a wind and the and it has come off track, and they'll get back online and make sure they get your, your mandatory overlapping uh, to get correct coverage. So those do exist when you buy into the drones. Uh, now, if you go buy a drone at Best Buy, I, I don't think you're probably going to get that level of information. But if you go out and work with some of the droning, uh, people like uh, DJI and some of the bigger companies like that that have a, a, a professional side, they have softwares that will help you plan that and then be able to help control that drone. And really, a lot of things, someone where you just, you just put it into the air, and when it's done, it comes right back to you because it has a home uh, setting. So it's, it, they've really got some cool technology to do that. And can you go directly to the process with uh, context capture? And that's actually what happens. You take the images that came out of that drone and drop them straight into context capture. There's no in-between at that point. Uh, the thing you need in context capture is you need the images to work with. All right, um, got another question here. Uh, what uh, what software was used to generate the 3MX uh, file? Again, the 3MX was done with Context Capture. It is a, a Bentley product. Um, it takes the the image and the data and, and other things, and you can put that together. You can do. They have a couple ways of editing it as well. If you don't want to use SiteOps to edit it, we're doing a very basic edit. Um, you you can go into um, a couple other products they have. You can take it into MicroStation. Uh, so again, a lot of different things you can do with the 3MX file if you don't, you know, if, if what you do for business does not include site. For example, maybe manufacturing, you go in, you can drone and do some images with your phone and come up with some piping that works. And they're not geometry, you need to go back and draw it, but it tells you right exactly where things is. You can measure it for the rough size. So it's a very good technology to look at your assets. Um, again, maybe you're going to do an expansion to a system, so you need to know what's there. So again, uh, uh, Context Capture does the 3MX, but then a number of softwares can actually take it, edit it, handle it, do different things with it. Got a question here about importing. Um, can you import the uh, 3MX data or the concepts or the uh, Context Capture data into Concept Station? Yes, you can import it in. Uh, that can be done. Um, I think you would still need to potentially clean it up prior to putting it into Concept Station. Uh, I do not want to speak for Concept Station. I'm not on that team, but I do not remember seeing editing tools similar to like we do in having site ops. Um, so again, you would need to clean that up prior to taking it, but it most definitely brings in uh, context capture data. I got a question here about are there any automated methods to emit the trees buildings from the ground model? Uh, not that I know at this time. I know they've I've, they've been working on that inside of Bentley. If it has been produced, I have not seen it. Again, I'm not on that that team, um, but I know that has been in conversations. Uh, that is something that you know needs to be looked at. And again, even if you, it does it automatically, we're always going to go back and tweak it just a little bit. So we definitely need to have the tools to uh, manually be able to take care of additional items. 
we got a question here. Um, how do the images from the digital cameras and phones get tied into the model? Okay. The model tied to survey control. All right, good example. Um, let's say I use my iPhone. Uh, last I heard, context capture was defaulted, or uh, some ways of capturing were to an iPhone. Once you bring that in, the iPhone actually geolocates that uh, picture you're taking. Once you bring that in, because the drone itself also geolocated the information, or I use survey controls, and I had the survey control shot inside of my imagery, I can then have that tie into it and then use that as supplemental images inside the model itself. Uh, but there's a lot of things where you do need to come in and, you know, go in and supplement that information. And ground control is one, for example, for if it was me being also a surveyor, if I'm going to send somebody out to do some preliminary uh, droning, I'd go ahead and make sure and maybe, maybe take two or three control points, mark them up somewhere. That way, if I need to go back and do field data later, I will have that uh, information on hand and I can just reference back to it as I'm doing my field shots. And it could be done in reverse, do field shots, then supplement with some, some imagery. All right, David. David, what is the primary advantage of Luminar T over SketchUp? All right, <clears throat> that one, I'll gladly answer. Uh, because in the in the day, uh, a number of years back, we used to, as SiteOps, really work with SketchUp a lot. A lot. And if you've seen SiteUp in the past, we push models out. First off, the models in Luminar or in SketchUp are not interactive. You have to go and then go to a whole other software like a Luminar T, a Luminon, or something else to add that that realistic function to it. Um, it, it does have limitations in the size of the models. A Luminar T can handle a lot of information, an extremely large amount of information with just a normal computer. Uh, so it does do a lot better job in performance that we've seen. Uh, so again, if it's up to me, I love both tools, but what I can do in a shorter amount of time, a way shorter amount of time in Luminar T um, is what I would prefer myself. All right, um, and I, I'm not really sure if I know what this is, but what if the drone work was supplied as a pod file? I am going to be honest with you. I'm not sure. Um, we can, I'll get up with you, uh, the person asked the question, I'll get up with you separately. Um, as far as I know, again, going by what I've heard, uh, that can be accepted into Context Capture, but I will find out for sure for you. And if not, I will find out what the alternative workflow would be to do that. But I will get I will get back in touch directly with you on that one. All right. Does setups come with templates for the car lots, et cetera, or there, is there a lot of preparation work to prepare templates? All right. Site ops is about the easiest thing you're going to ever see used. We set it up to be as simple as it looks. The hardest part of using site ops is experience. If you have experience, then site ops is going to be simple. A lot of times we get users that go, I don't know where a building should go, things like that, because they've never designed. So parking lot, for example, it already comes in. You can default it for whatever properties you want. Mine are 9 by 18 parking spaces, 24-foot drive aisles. Let's make it a 60-degree angle. Let's come in and stretch it out. So I can start changing and playing with the parking lot any way I want to. Maybe I don't want parking on that one side. Maybe I want to come in and do, let's change this. And this is one I love showing because it's sort of funny. What if I came and did a curved angle parking? Not that I can't do this in any CAD tool, but go in and ask somebody to draw this, like a walmart size parking lot, they'd probably stare at you for a while. But this is really cool that I could come in and do this. Now, the other thing you can do is we can also create what are called templates. It could be a spatial template. It could be something like a big box retailer. It could be a cross dock warehouse where it already has parking lots and dock areas and all that all set up. All I got to do is drop it in, add a couple of driveways, hit the grading button, and I'm done. That's how easy it is. So basically if you're getting users that are repetitive or they have maybe, uh, uh, for example, McDonald's uses site ops and they did a lot of storage. They put in a lot of different templates, drop them in, add a couple of driveways. Does the site work? Does it not? There you go. Simple as that. Um, it can also do residential single family and, and again, tons of different things, but we give you all that up front and then to change anything is fairly simple. I mean, think about how many times have you seen a default property area that looks about as simple as this. We, Our goal is to make you have a lot of speed and power with the software and again, use your experience more than you're typing on the keyboard. All right. Um, what contour interval was used on the church site? What is the maximum accuracy? 
Um, the accuracy is going to be down to the quality of the droning, but we're hearing some very, I mean, centimeter type accuracy on some people. Uh, again, it's going to be all down to if I'm doing an aerial from a plane that's thousands of feet high versus a drone that's 400 feet high, the drone's probably going to give me a lot more accuracy inside of it. Um, and again, just for what we brought in, SideOps looks at, again, it's the uh, Qt3D model is creating a mesh. So it's actually just throwing out a real model. In SideOps, we're taking that mesh and we create a surface. You can actually see the same type surface. And from there, we're creating contours. And the contours inside SideOps, I can change them to whatever I want. If I want to see one foot contours where every fifth is my indexed one, I can do that. Fairly simple because all it's doing is reading the surface. All right, and then a uh, question, uh, will we get a copy of this webinar? I would like to show the setups to the owner of our company. Um, we will definitely have this out. Uh, we usually post it out to our Bentley area. Um, I see your question. We'll make sure and get back with you directly. And to show site ops, I love to tell people, if you want to see site ops, get up with the sales team, get up on the Bentley.com website. We love to do demonstrations, and one thing we'd love to do is say, just give us 30 minutes. Don't tell us ahead of time. Tell us what the site address is and say, I'm going to put in a, a multifamily or I'm going to put in a shopping center. Or I'm going to put in a trans, uh, uh, I don't know, a, 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 I've done a nuclear reactor pad one time. Ask us to do something. We're going to show you in that 30 minutes how much information, how much design you could have done. And you're going to be amazed at why you've never bought this software before and this workflow. Why is it not in your company? All right, and the last question we have here is um, this: the participant does mainly quarry designs and wants to know, does setups have templates for earthworks? When it comes to quarries, um, the main issue we have with setups is its whole goal is to move dirt at the most optimized cost. Um, we do have some people doing quarries where I can work with you a little more one-on-one -on -one with this. It's a little more manual. Uh, we do have things under defaults called desired export, desired import. Uh, we can also go under grading and do things that are called borrow and fill areas, which can now allow me to say I need to take out 100,000 cubic yards of this material um, and then be able to use it. It's a little more manual. We just don't have it where it works directly like with a template, uh, but it by all means can help you do work. Again, just a little more uh, hands-on. But again, if you want to see more of that, I'd be more than happy to, to get online with you and walk through that scenario in a one-on-one in -on -one way. All right, that looks like all we got, David. Yeah, you know, I'd like to thank everyone for showing up today. It's been absolutely my pleasure uh, talking about droning and what to do with your project.